How you doing, Sam Sill? How you doing, ZAK? How you doing, Cleveland? <laughs> Good morning, Sammy. How you doing, Wendy? I'm doing well. You good? Yeah. Looking good. Thank you. Welcome to Seed Town. It's good to be here. Yeah. I'm here promoting the Wendy Williams Show. Fox 8, September the 16th? Yeah, at 11 a.m. 11 in the morning. Yeah, you know, um, I know that people, and I was saying this oh, earlier. Michael, just a little oh, sorry. Bit. Go, yeah. I was saying this earlier, and, you know, when I was um, over visiting my Fox family, and I'll say it again. Uh, I love daytime TV. Mm -hmm. As a radio personality, you know, Sam, we've got plenty of time to watch daytime TV right. because our shifts are only four hours. Right. And I fell in love with talk shows, court shows, game shows. Mm -hmm. Daytime has always been my favorite day part of TV. Not after midnight, not nighttime TV, mm -hmm. not even more. So, you know, I love talk shows. The idea that I'm actually doing a talk show now yeah. is just, you don't understand. Uh -huh. This, to me, is everything in terms of, you know, what I want to be when I grow up. What did you know? What did you know you wanted to do TV as, as a kid before radio or what? What happened? No, I... You I knew did, then? No, I did radio, and that's what I wanted I'm to do. About, oh, you wanted to do TV when you was doing radio? Well, when the call, when the call came. Okay. We wanted <laughs> to do a talk show. All right, well, guess what? Yeah. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to work it out. But I have to tell you something. My radio career, other than a couple of political hiccups, mm -hmm. I loved now, you don't have to be honest with me mm. because you're still in the game. Mm. But honest to God, I loved being on radio. I loved everything about it except mm. the hiccups of you're suspended without pay mm -hmm. or something like that. <laughs> you know, like, like jerky bosses. But I fell yeah. in love with the microphone. I got sideswiped by it. Sitting mm -hmm. in a room, being by myself, going through my magazines, mm -hmm. talking to people, having to draw up the pictures of stories in people's minds, mm -hmm. making people use their imagination yep, while, yep. They, while they inspire me to use my own. It's not easy. Yeah. But it was so pleasing to me. So I wasn't looking to be on TV. Mm -hmm. I was already, I was doing radio in New York. I yeah. mean, there, there was only one place you can go after radio in New York, and that's down. Mm -hmm. You know, I had my family, and, and, and I had already written a couple of books based right. on being popular. I mean, I was, able, I was able to be talking head on a few television shows, like the Ricky Lake show, the old one. So you, you, got, you got the call while you were still on radio. Which I was, was still on radio, thing. and great I got thing. the phone call. Right. Yeah. So, and, my, and my, my career was successful. And so, um, when after the six-week sneak peek, and I found out that we were going to get a first season of the talk show, I said, I cannot do both. It's not fair to me. It's mm -hmm. not fair to my family. And i got to choose one or the other. And if you're not going to bet on yourself, then what horse in the game are you going to bet on? And so all we see is that one hour, but it's longer than an hour. How long is it? An hour. An hour. I'm talking about as far as preparation. Uh, two hours before. Okay, two hours right, before. Well, here's the okay. thing. Here's the thing. I don't want to poo-poo it, but I do have to say, we're live out of New York at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. which means that when you see me on TV, there was no, oh, stop, start, let's do this over. Stop, <laughs> right. start, let's right. do right. this over. Right. I'm not there for 10 hours. Yeah. I get to the studio every morning at about 7.30. Mm -hmm. uh, I spend about 15 minutes going through the newspapers again and, uh, you know, just, just sitting and staring at the wall. Yeah. And then another 15 minutes up until 8 o'clock on the dot choosing which outfit I'm going to wear and which wig and shoes will accompany it. Because I don't do that ahead of time because as a woman, you know, sometimes we feel a little bloated or fluffy. Or sometimes we feel like, oh, I had a good workout yesterday at the gym. I want to show my guns, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or, or, or I am not feeling a knee length skirt today. Um, you know, I want to go short. Or I'm, I don't want to wear a short wig. I don't want to wear a straight wig. There are a lot of things only the women understand, uh, Sam, what I'm talking yeah, about. I don't understand about the wig thing. No, well, <laughs> but in general, like as a, right, as a right, woman, right. I don't decide until that morning right. what I'm going to wear. And speaking of that, you have the wig line now. Yes. Right? Wendy Williams Hair World. This is one of mine. Now, I know you don't know much about wigs, but if you were to walk up on me, wouldn't you swear this is growing from my head? Look at my root realness. You better stop. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm no, just, no, wait, wait. Hold, Sammy, hold on. Just hold on. Pull up. This is a, this Seriously. Is a, this is a full wig. Top, Stop right? playing! I mean, it'll set you back to seven ninety nine, this particular one. <laughs> but it's Wendy Williams Hair World, so therefore I've incorporated things for for every girl. If if you want to dabble in wearing wigs, first of all, I want to tell you that wigs are not for old women. Because normally, I know if you're like me, you think about your old Aunt Pearl, who's eighty years old. You got girl. I saw a girl wig come off in the club the other day. Though. You so got to learn how to attach she, your wig correct, yeah. or don't even. You need the snap clips up top. Uh -huh. You know. But I, um, my wigs start at forty nine ninety nine, and they go up to a thousand dollars. 
A thousand dollars. Wow. This one's seven ninety nine. But see, I've been wearing wigs. Uh, Colby knows this for over ten years now. Every single day. So it's not something that I do just to mm -hmm. do. Like I, I'm serious about it. So you have like a wig for each outfit, or this is what I'm feeling today. Let me go grab. Let me go grab. A wig for each event. The wig that I'm wearing here to talk to you on my Cleveland tour with my new family. I'm not going to wear the same one to the gym to sweat it out. Right. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hang this wig up. You gonna put it up? And I'm gonna put on okay. like you know. Are seven, you are you the wig carrier? No? I'm gonna, okay, no. Okay. I'm gonna put on a seventy nine dollar, you know, synthetic because they have great memory curl and they dry really wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And I've got all the products to go along with my wigs, including these beautiful headstands. And it's just a dream. So it's Wendy Williams Hair World. The wigs uh, will slowly be available everywhere. Right now, um, off the top of my head, I know that you can go to especiallyyours.com. You can go to wig.com, and I have carrying cases, the washing stuff. You know, it's just, this is a long time. This is a marathon, the wigs. Yeah. Now, now let, let's go right back to the show real quick. Okay. Next, next week, upcoming guests. Well, I will tell you this. Okay. I'm not Give me a little bit now. Come uh, on. Listen. Okay. I will say that we have a little something for everybody, okay. as usual. Mm -hmm. You know, the guests on my show. It's one of the fun things about doing the talk show. I mean, we've had everybody on our show from Snoop and Nas and Nicki Minaj and and um, Mark McGrath, who you say, the guy from Sugar Ray, what would make him a great guest? But you know what? As you know, as a it's professional interviewer, it's the content. Yeah. Exactly. A great guest is not always going to be Donald Trump, although... He is a great That's a guest. Great guess. What he gives you moment after moment of talk. Yeah, tell him. Um, but you know, I I love talking to the various people on the show, the young, the old, um, the movie Anybody stars. Anybody ever tick you off? Like right in the middle of the interview, and they like you like really, or right before the show, really? Yeah, and an Who older and an old Wendy would have told you. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a, but I'm a lady, uh -huh. and I, I'm a polished I'm a polished journalist. In case you didn't know. <laughs> Yes, the old Wendy would have told us. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, uh, you know, um, I gain nothing by talking about the best guest or the worst guest, mm -hmm. you know. Um, because my favorite part of the show, honestly, yeah. is what you all give in my head when I come through the double doors. It's the most sensational thing. Yeah. When you hear, it's time for the Wendy Williams right, show. Right, right. And I am standing backstage, and I'm, they have this little sticker, a star mm -hmm. on the ground, you know. And, and Memsor is going over my clothes with the lint brush, and, and Antoine might be giving me one last comb. And I look up to my Aunt Joan, who passed away the year that I was born, but she would have been so proud. She was a model, and I never met her. My, my middle name is Joan, though. And I look up to my Aunt Joan, and I say, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got more color for y'all. Yeah, okay. Wendy Williams. I'm still rolling this hold on one second. Yeah. When did you get to that point? Uh, we're talking, you know, when we talk about radio, when did you get to the point? Well, how did you transition and say, okay, I cannot give or I will not do the same show as far as, guess what? The breaking news. I heard this about this person. I just received this tip that Diddy, you know, is in this awkward position yeah. or how did you, you know, because that, that's what a lot of us were looking for because yeah. we followed you all throughout your career. And well, now the television show comes. The problem is, with all due respect to my first love radio, television is a much bigger business. Mm -hmm. I mean, the liability, um, the amount of people. I'm one individual, but I'm responsible for a staff of almost 300 people plus my crew. And people are having babies and people are looking for health insurance. And, and I got a lawyer who's on set all the time. Um, you know, you ask if he carries my wigs. No, that's Marcus. He's the publicist representing right. a big firm to be sure that everything good. Mm -hmm. It's so coddled, it makes me want to throw up. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's on one hand. Right. On the other hand, I feel so protected. The Wendy on the radio would jump on and immediately tell you the T or the T the way I see it. Right. On TV, <laughs> you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it's the ramifications. Lawsuits here, lawsuits. Not that you can't be sued on the radio, but it's mm -hmm. more. And like you said, it's more. It's even be, yeah. it's beyond the lawsuits. Like you just said, it's like a whole thing. I got station affiliates. It's just a, it's a much bigger situation. And there's much more at stake. Because if I lose... TV, where am I going? Yeah. I mean, it's because for me, there's this, this is the highest mountain.